Welcome to today's dentistry with Dr. Blanche Gruby. The goal of our program is to educate you, the patient, in all aspects of the Gruby Huggins Holistic Dental Protocol. On this installment, we're discussing wisdom teeth and should they be removed. And now, here's Dr. Blanche. Hi. I had an interesting day at work today. One of my patients came to me and asked me if they should have their impacted tooth removed or not. Now, as most of you know, you go to a regular dentist, your conventional everyday dentist, they're automatically going to say, remove all four wisdom teeth. Automatically. Why? Why do we remove wisdom teeth? I've got to get a little historical first. When I was in dental school, we were taught to remove wisdom teeth. My thinking at the time was, if it ain't broke, why try to fix it? If it's not bothering you, why not just leave it alone? But I've changed my thinking since then. Why have I changed my thinking? As usual, conversations with Dr. Hal Huggins. Dr. Hal Huggins made a statement one day. And the statement was, wisdom tooth is ectodermal tissue in a mesodermal space. Therefore, it shouldn't be there. And I thought, wow. I think he just said something really, really significant. Where'd you get that from, Hal? I just made it up. <laughs> yeah, he just made it up, but it was really significant. I continued to think about it. Ectodermal tissue in a mesodermal space. Hmm. Let me back up again. Remember, we started out with me being in dental school and being told that wisdom teeth should all come out. And my attitude was, you got to prove it to me first. And if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So let's just leave all these wisdom teeth and we'll wait until they become cystic. Because that's what I was taught in dental school. When the wisdom tooth becomes cystic, then you remove it. Okay, so I got on one hand what I was taught in dental school. Wisdom teeth should come out or you wait until they become cystic. On the other hand, I've got what Hal Huggins has just taught me. It's ectodermal tissue in a mesodermal space. Now I'm pondering both of these thoughts. And the more I thought about it, the more I came to the conclusion that Hal Huggins was absolutely right, more so than the professors in dental school, because it's ectodermal tissue in a mesodermal space. Now, I've said that sentence about six times so far. What the heck does that mean? Let's have a little lesson in embryology. Embryology is the study of how we form in utero, how that egg and that sperm came together and created you. So let's get started with that. Boy, we're really getting historical here, right? Okay, so mom and dad got together and we had the sperm and the egg meet. When they did, they formed a cell like this. And after just a few minutes, that cell indurated like this and became two cells. Then those two cells divided again and became four cells. Then those four cells divided again and again and again. Before you knew it, you had a ball of cells, called a blastomere by the way, you had a ball of cells. And then that ball of cells began to fill up with fluid. It's very interesting that in the study of embryology, they determined that those outside cells became what we call ectodermal tissue. What the heck does that mean? Well, it means that ectodermal tissue is, these are the cells that were destined, they were programmed to become your skin. Ecto means outside. It's for everything outside. Your skin, your nails, your hair, and part of your teeth. Why did I say that? Well. The ball got bigger and bigger and bigger. And then suddenly, I'm not sure which day, I think it's day six or day seven, one end of the ball began to indurate. 
So I got my I got my little trusty surgical glove here. Okay, let's let's blow this baby up. We do this for the kids in the office. They love it. Okay, let's so we're gonna make a little balloon here. Let's make believe that this is a round ball. Okay. So here this rep this round ball represents our blastomere with ectodermal cells on the outside. All of a sudden it begins to indurate inside one end. And as it indurates, the cells continue through the whole ball until they come out this end. So, let me ask you a question for those of you who are still awake. If I take my finger and I do this, Is my finger on the inside of the balloon or the outside of the balloon? Suppose I could get my finger to come all the way out to this end. The right answer is my finger is on the outside of the balloon. See? It's not inside the balloon because the tissue has indurated. It's on the outside. So all of this tissue is ectodermal tissue still. Well, the beginning of that induration becomes the mouth of the person. The other end where it comes out is the anus of that person. So your mouth to your anus starts out in that first ball, goes all the way through, and is all ectodermal tissue. So not only your skin, your hair, your nails, but all of the lining of your mouth, your esophagus, your stomach, your small intestines, your large intestines, all the way out to the anus is ectodermal tissue. It's important to remember because ectodermal tissue is the tissue in the body that sloughs off and changes the fastest. Okay? Keep that in mind. It's the tissue that changes the fastest. Okay. Now, you recall, I, I mentioned teeth, and I said that part of the tooth is ectodermal in nature. Teeth, are, they're just so different than the rest of the body. It's amazing. They don't, they don't follow any of the rules. All the other organs are one kind of tissue. Teeth, no. Teeth have to be two kinds of tissue. Teeth are ectodermal in the crown portion. So the part of the tooth that you chew on, the part of the tooth that has enamel on the outside, the part of the tooth that you see when you look at teeth, that's ectodermal in nature. So it belongs outside the body, right? Mm-hmm. But the root of the tooth is mesodermal in nature. Well, what is mesodermal? Well, mesodermal were the cells that formed in the middle of that ball. Mesodermal is the tissues that became the organs inside the body. So the crown of the tooth is ectodermal in nature. The root of the tooth is mesodermal in nature, meaning the root of the tooth belongs inside the body. And that's exactly what the bone marrow is. The bone marrow is inside the body. The crown portion of the tooth is ectodermal it is outside the body. So why the heck am I making such a big fuss over ectodermal, mesodermal? Some of you, your heads must be spinning by now. Because in nature, in the body, all those compartmental tissues have to stay in their compartments. If you have ectodermal tissue in a mesodermal space, you have a problem. Now, if you've ever had an ingrown hair, you will know that that hair will start to curl. And instead of growing out of the skin the way it's supposed to, it continues to grow inside. Well, what happens? Your tissue gets red. The tissue swells. The tissue fills up with fluid. It becomes excruciatingly painful until you get the nerve to either go to a dermatologist and have the little pimple or bubble burst, or if you're really brave, you do it yourself. And you go pop, and the pus comes shooting out, 
and this curly hair that looks like a little pigtail comes flying out of there. That is ectodermal tissue and a mesodermal space, and your body was working very hard to try to get rid of it, and that's why it became cystic. It, cystic means it, the fluid actually filled in and tried to fill it up so that when it did rupture, the hair would come out with it. Well, the same thing happens in the mouth. When you have an impacted tooth, it can be a wisdom tooth, and 90% of the time it is a wisdom tooth. Sometimes it can be any other tooth. It can be a canine that's lying sideways. It can be a bicuspid that couldn't figure out where the front door was and it stayed in there. It can be any tooth in the body. If you have a tooth that stays inside the bone marrow, that's ectodermal tissue in a mesodermal space. If you've been paying attention, you know that that is not good. Your body never, never, never makes a mistake. It will try very hard to get rid of that ectodermal tissue in a mesodermal space. And that, my friends, is why wisdom teeth, if they're impacted, or any other tooth, if it's impacted, eventually will become cystic. It is just a matter of time. See, when I graduated from dental school, I thought only some of them become cystic. No, if the body is functioning properly, all of them will become cystic, or the patient will die first. That's a possibility. Maybe they died before the tooth actually became cystic. But you cannot leave an impacted tooth inside the mesodermal space of the body, which is the bone marrow, and expect to have 100% health and vitality because your body is busy spending some of its immune system, all those white blood cells, all those cells that help to keep us healthy and watch out for bad things that are happening in your body, all of those cells cannot be doing their best job if they're working 24 seven to try to figure out how to get that wisdom tooth or that impacted tooth out of the body. It's that simple. Sounds complicated, but it's not. Remember, you cannot have ectodermal tissue in a mesodermal space. It doesn't matter if it's, a, if it's an ingrown nail. It doesn't matter if it's an ingrown hair. It doesn't matter if it's an ingrown impacted tooth. It doesn't belong there. Therefore, if you really want to be healthy and you want to be your best and have your immune system work on things that are really, really important, well, then you want to get rid of your impacted wisdom teeth. You want to get rid of your impacted teeth, be they canines, be they laterals, be they bicuspids, whatever. Get them out of that mesodermal space and get on with your life and get healthy. This is Dr. Blanche Gruby. I hope I explained why impacted teeth probably should be extracted. I hope you understood it. If not, send me an email at bdgruby at AOL, and I'll try to get your questions answered. Have a good night. You've been watching Today's Dentistry with Dr. Blanche Gruby. The goal of our program is to educate you, the patient, in all aspects of the Gruby Huggins Holistic Dental Protocol and how it offers you dentistry that is safe for the whole body. Educate yourself. Watch the other informative and new patient videos right here on the website. Then call us for an appointment at the Gruby Clinic.